Okay, so do you know enough math to be able to solve this simple math word problem? Well, hopefully you do, but uh, there's only one way to really find out, and that is to try the problem, which is the following. What's the distance around one slice of a 20-inch wide pizza with eight even slices? All right, so I'll read this again. What's the distance around one slice of a 20-inch wide pizza with eight even slices. Now we do have a multiple choice question here and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 11.98 inches, B is 18.77 inches, C is 27.85 inches, and D is 31.54 inches. Now feel free to use a calculator, but if you have the answer, Put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so uh, nothing better than math and pizza. So let's go ahead and take one more look at the problem before I show you the answer. Okay, so we have a 20 inch wide pizza with eight even slices, and we're trying to determine the distance around one of those slices. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C approximately 27.85 inches. Now, if you got that right, well, you definitely get a happy face and A+. Plus. And if I could, I would send you a nice, lovely pizza, as pizza is awesome, and pizza and math is a great combination, kind of like peanut butter and jelly. Okay, now, if you didn't get this right, well, no big deal. We're going to go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so first things first, we are dealing with a lovely math word problem, which means you want to use the rule of three. So you want to read the problem at least three times before you really start, you know, going to work on it. Now, even though I read the problem three times, I think I'm pretty sure I read it three times by now. You know, if you saw a problem like this on a test or an exam or for the first time, you need to get in the habit of just like saying, all right, let me take my time really understand the information and the problem, okay? It's very, very common for us uh, students and people to be like, oh, I understand what's going on. I'm going to solve the problem. And then they do a bunch of work and then they go, wait a minute, I think I'm lost. They come back and read the problem and then they go in a different direction and then get the right answer. So for those of you that are students, you really need to um, understand that you're actually gonna be saving time by taking your time. Let your brain kind of kick in and start thinking about this material. Now, for those of you that uh, are still students, you might be saying, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, what do I do if I encounter a problem like this on a test and I have no idea? Well, I'm gonna encourage you to guess. Yes, indeed, I said it. You might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? You're telling people to guess? Well, I am, okay? There's nothing worse than seeing a test with a bunch of blank answers, right? Especially multiple choice uh, questions, right? Always, always take a guess. There's very few circumstances where you should not guess, but you want to try to take a reasonable guess, right? So let's go ahead and just uh, take a look at this um, situation and see if we can kind of eliminate at least one or more of the answers, okay? So here is a pizza, right? So we're here we got a real basic pizza. It has eight slices. Now, do any of these answers not make sense, okay? Well, I think these two right here, if you think about it, uh, don't make sense if you understand the question. And of course, you don't even need to understand the full math to have the correct answer here. We obviously know the answer is C, but why uh, isn't that uh, A and B, why are these answers you know, not reasonable answers? Okay, so if you have a 20 inch wide pizza, that means the width of our pizza is 20 inches, okay? That's the entire width. Now, we have to kind of, um, uh, do some things here with this problem and this brings me to another point a lot of you might be saying hey mr youtube math man this is not realistic because you know the 
the place I get pizza from, the pizza is all like, you know, messed up. It's not a perfect circle. Well, I get that. But anytime you're dealing with a math problem like this, you never want to overcomplicate it. So we do have to overcomplicate it. Excuse me. Uh, what we need to do here is kind of uh, um, make some assumptions, and that's perfectly normal, right? And the assumptions are is that we're dealing with a perfectly cir circular pizza, and all the slices are perfectly sliced, and they go through the center of this uh uh, pizza. Okay, so yes, indeed, you know, in reality, we're not going to have a perfect uh, pizza. But uh, quite frankly, if we had something pretty close, our answer would be approximately, so let's say, 27.85 inches or something in that range. All right, now let's go back to um, talking about why these two answers don't make any sense. So if you have a 20 inch wide pizza, that means that this is the width, this is the diameter. Uh, of this circle, okay? So halfway through uh, is half of the diameter is what we call the radius. In other words, this is 10 right here and this is 10 right here because the entire width of the pizza is 20, okay? So if we're trying to determine the distance around one slice of pizza and this is 10 right here, just this one side is 10, there's no way that um, we're going to have 11.9 inches as the total distance around this pizza slice, right? So we have a pizza slice. We want to know this plus this plus this, okay? So the width here, okay, of this pizza, again, is 20. So uh, the radius is 10. And, of course, I'm kind of giving you some clues on how I'm going to be solving the problem. But uh, this doesn't make sense, okay? So if this is 10, well, you can see that this right here is also 10. If you understood even this part of the problem, you can eliminate this answer and this answer, and it would be down to these two answers as the only kind of reasonable choices. So before you just take a blind uh, guess, see if you can at least eliminate an answer or two. Uh, and of course, that's going to really increase your probability of getting the right answer. But if we didn't have a multiple choice question, well, you're just simply going to have to know the math. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and get into right now. Okay, so I pretty much uh, gave you a lot of um, clues on how I'm going to approach this problem. And the first thing I want to do is model the situation. So we have a 20 inch wide pizza with eight even slices. And of course, we have to make some assumptions here that this is a perfectly circular uh, pizza and everything's, you know, uh, you know geometric. You know, we have symmetry here and all these slices go through the center of the pizza. So here is the situation and I'm looking for the distance of one, uh, the distance around one slice of pizza, right? So we'll go back to the problem. What's the distance around, okay? And effectively, you can kind of think of that as the perimeter. If I said, what's the distance around this rectangle? And I have 10 and three right here. Well, the distance is the perimeter, right? Which would be 10 plus 3 plus 10 plus 3, okay? So effectively, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the perimeter of this one little slice of pizza. So that would be this distance right here from here to here to here, the sum total distance. Okay, so obviously, we're going to need to know a thing or two about uh, circles and the distance around circles. Okay, now before I get into that, I'm going to uh, let you kind of think about it for a second because hopefully you remember uh, the formula for a distance around uh, a circle. But more than that, we need to think about this uh, part of the circle, this much of the circle. How much does this arc represent? Okay, well, we're going to get into that in just one second. But first, let's go down here and kind of see a little bit better uh, picture of the situation. So I want the distance around one slice of pizza. So I have a 20 inch wide uh, uh, 20 inch wide pizza. Okay, so I already uh, talked about that this, dis this distance from here to here is half of the diameter. The width of a circle is the diameter of the circle. Okay, so anything that emanates out from the center of the circle to the edge is called the radius, and it's half of the diameter. So this is 10 inches here. And so if this is 10 inches, well, this is 10 inches right here. So we already have uh, two parts or two sides around the pizza. All we need really is this part right here, and we just add up all three of these numbers, and we're going to get the distance around the pizza. Okay, so that means that we're going to need to think about how much of the circle is this slice right here. Well, we have eight even slices, so this is really one-eighth of the circle, okay, one-eighth around the circle. Now, let's just kind of think about this for a second. 
So if this is 1 8 and this is 1 8 right here, and this is 1 8 right here, and this is 1 8 right here, well, how many 8s do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 8 or 1 half of the circle or a semicircle. Okay. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. I'm only kind of showing you that because you need to understand that we are dealing with 1 8 of the circle. All right, so as long as we can determine the distance, the full distance around the circle, and then get only one-eighth of that uh, distance, we would have this distance right here. We already have the sides of the pizza. So what is the distance around a circle called? Well, hopefully, remember, it starts with a C. And if you're saying, hey, Mr. Teacher, Math Man, it's called the circumference, you would be right. And more, uh, imp uh, I would be even more impressed if you remember the formula. Okay, so the formula for the circumference around a circle, or the circumference of a circle, is 2 pi r, or um, pi times the diameter. It's actually two um, formulas, but, there are, but they are equivalent. So this uh, circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. The diameter is 2 times the radius, okay? So I'm going to use this uh, formula right here because we do have the radius 10, because we do need the radius uh, to find the distance around this pizza. Okay, so the circumference is simply going to be uh, 2 times pi times r. So 2 times pi times r, r, or the radius is 10. So we're going to have 2 times 10 is 20 times pi. Okay, now we're, I'm going to go ahead and use a very rough approximation for pi, and uh, that's going to be 3.14. So uh, if we let pi equal to 3.14, uh, we're going to have 20 times 3.14. I'm going to replace that pi with 3.14, and we're going to have an approximation. Now notice this little symbol right here. I'm, I'm going from an equal sign to an approximation sign, right? So the circumference around the entire circle is approximately 62.8 inches. Okay, so we're almost ready to solve this problem, but uh, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help, okay? I need your help. I'm not <laughs> shy to ask uh, for your help because I have a pretty powerful uh, goal. Now, my goal is to help other people. That is my goal. As a math teacher, I love teaching math, and my goal is to try to um, try to make math as clear and understandable and interesting as possible, okay? But I definitely need your help to reach as many people as possible. And the best way you can help me and this channel is to simply hit that subscribe button. That really does count for YouTube. And if you're going to do that, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, hopefully you have a goal. And if your goal has something to do with math, well, make sure you get help, okay? You don't need to learn math all on your own. Although some of you are probably, um, uh, you know, capable enough to be able to pick up a book and understand a, a lot of uh, what's in the book all on your own. But, you know, not everything you learn about math or not everything that you need to understand about math is going to be in a textbook. You're going to need uh, someone that has a lot of experience with the subject. And if you really want to learn math, if you like my teaching style, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you're kind of... Um, wanting to relearn, you know, kind of the math that we're dealing with here, which is a lot of geometry and algebra, you might want to check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. There I cover basic math, algebra, geometry, and a ton of other stuff. But if you need help with actual geometry or algebra, I have those courses in the description as well, or the links to those courses in the description. All right, so let's go ahead, uh, go, go ahead and take the next step. Boy, I kind of tripping all over my words there and finish this problem up because uh, really there's not much left to do, right? So we know that the circumference is approximately 62.8 inches. That's the entire distance around the circle, but we only need one eighth of that distance, right? That's the part we need around this pizza slice. So one eighth of the circumference is gonna be one eighth times 62.8. And of course we can use our calculator and we're going to get 7.85. All right, so 7.85 is what distance? Well, that's this little distance right here. Okay, so 7.85 is one eighth of the circle. We know that these uh, two sides of the pizza are 10 and 10. Of course, we are uh, working with inches, units of measure. So now we simply just add up 7.85, 10 plus 10. So we're going to uh, do that little simple math. So 10 plus 10 plus uh, 7.85 is 27.85 inches. 
All right, so the distance around a one pizza slice is going to be approximately 27.85 inches. All right, so hopefully this wasn't that uh, challenging of a problem, but uh, if you're like Amos hey, 2 Math Man, you know, I haven't done this stuff in a long time, that's perfectly fine. You know, I think math um, is kind of like riding a bike, okay? Uh, I.e., you know, if you know how to ride a bike and if you haven't uh, rode a bike in, let's say, 20, 30, 40 years, yeah, you might stumble, you know, kind of getting back on a bike, but it probably won't take you too long until you're kind of riding that bike nicely. And I think the same thing is true with math, okay? If you were lucky enough to have great math teachers when you uh, first learned the subject. Now, unfortunately, if you didn't really learn it correctly the first time, you know, it's like riding the bike. You know, if you didn't really learn how to ride a, a bike the first time, you're probably going to, you know, have to learn how to ride a bike, you know, uh, you know, all over again or really, you know, from the first time going forward, right? I'm making a real poor metaphor here. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, some of you actually learn math like in a really, really good way, a strong way. So if you want to relearn math, you can just kind of, you know, immerse yourself with the subject and you probably can recapture all your algebra, geometry, trigonometry skills if that's what you want to do. But others of you, you know, just because you took a math course, it's possible that maybe you didn't learn it, uh, you know, in the in the best manner. Maybe your teachers weren't you know, connecting with you in the best way for whatever the case might be. So, you know, everyone, you have to kind of figure it out for yourself, okay, like how confident you are in your math skills. But here is my last little message in this, uh, you know, long rambling ending of this video. And that is this, whether you are strong in math or you were weak in math, everybody can be successful in math, but you got to really immerse yourself in the subject and put in the work. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.